So I'm going to have to get into the little box here. So I'll start by taking off these things on the top. Oh, wow, they're tight. So I'm going to have to flip this thing upside down. And need to take out four little bolts, which we'll get into. Them. So now let's take it out. I've now taken out the four little bolts, flip it up the other way now, and you have five to take out here. It's one, two, three, four, five. The bolts I've already taken out are for the power supply. And uh, we just get these loosened. take them out and the case will just lift off or the bottom should just lift off I've now taken out the five little screws on the base and this should now lift up with a bit of luck and there it goes and there's the power supply which we've already taken the bolts out on the side so that should also come out I can get that on the side here that's a bit tight okay what are we catching on something okay yeah that was a bit hard you had to wrestle it out a little bit so out she comes pop that there for the moment and uh, down in there if I can get that up that's the board we're going to be removing I'll reposition the camera again and see what we can do I think I'll take out this cable and see what we need to undo. I can see one, so two, three, I can see four little screw. There's four, I think it is, holding in the main board, so we'll have to undo them. And, uh, oops, I'm bumping things. Yeah, I'm bumping into the camera, so a bit hard. I'll uh, probably finish up taking this out off our camera and then come back and uh, show you the finished result as they say I've taken out the the four bolts or little screws if you prefer there's a zip tie um, holding everything in place at the moment so I've got to cut the zip tie and again I have to move the camera and come back after I've cut it I've cut the zip tie that's holding the cables here but there's another one right down the bottom here so I have to cut that one as well and then we can get the main board out so now I've cut the second zip tie there and we can actually get to the board so we can move things around a little bit now okay what do we got over here we got right oh, no, that's the fan so I'm going to basically rewire this particular board following pretty well what's uh, what's on the old board and uh, we'll see how we go I'm now going to take out the old um, I suppose you call it the control board now this is the new one that's going in you've got uh, exp1 exp2 they're labeled pretty easy to read um, so you can't sort of mistake it so you got one two three I've just taken out the cable and we've got four little screws that need to come out so we'll take them out now I've now taken the four little bolts out and popped off the little dial on the other side and that should now lift off which you can see it does and I'll put the little dial back on again and uh, that's the old one coming out and uh, this is the old controller board that's what it looked like This is the new one. So 
so when we put them side by side you can definitely see there's some uh, differences on the back and some slight differences in the front as well so we'll put the new one in now you will be needing to use the little tiny washers that uh, were supplied so I don't know if you can see that at all there it is there that's got to be incorporated with the screw otherwise it's going to be too narrow on this uh, particular board and you'll get a bit of play in it so we'll install it now and we'll come back once I've done that and uh, there's the new one let's pop that off so basically it just goes back in the same position four little screws hold it in place so uh, we'll get stuck into it got to admit it's very fiddly getting getting things in place though it's uh hmm how am I going to do this the fans in the way okay that I didn't anticipate right so what I'm going to have to do it looks like will be pop this in position and these cables I'll have to route them down around the back of the fan it looks like so we'll do that after I position these in, let's get the little little screws and uh, tighten them up a bit. Now, one or two things you need to know about. The old board itself, obviously, you've got different pinouts. So you can't just pull things out and plug them straight into the new board because it won't work. Uh, one particular thing to look at, is, of course, is your fan. The fan is actually over here. You've got positive and negative. Now on the new board, there's no provision for it, so you have to put your power, uh, positive and negative off the power um, pin here. So just bear that in mind, your hot end is also in a different location. And your fans and whatever, there's, there's different um, pins, but it's not that hard to find. Uh, most of the stuff is pretty well documented, but just do bear that in mind. If you're going to pull uh, pieces out of the old board, and you think that if you pull it out and plug it in the identical spot here, it'll work well you're in for a shock it won't so I'll get on with uh, pulling out all the bits and pieces and popping them in the right slots and away we go so I'll be taking out the power which is positive and negative which is pretty easy to sort of see and that comes out pretty pretty quick very awkward with a camera stuck in the uh, spot working off to the side there we go that one comes out nice and easy so we'll also be taking out the fan which is the next one across that's your fan these two here uh, these have been all hot glued down so I'll have to probably come off camera to do it I'm not certain if I can move them at the moment no, they're pretty secure I'll have to uh, do that off camera and come back I've now pulled off the hot glue which was holding the cables in place so that'll make life a little bit easier now for me so the next ones I'm taking out are the positive and negative for the fan and they should come off pretty easy and there they go so these will be relocated into the power on the um, new board so they're both out which is good so all those will fit into um, positive and negative on these uh, this particular power section here now I've just pulled out all the pins on the back they're nicely labeled the only ones that uh, you might have a bit of difficulty with the are the thermistors you've got the um, first one here which is the bird uh, sorry the nozzle thermistor the second one in is your bed thermistor uh, on the new board itself, we've got um, thermistor here, you've got your um, bed here, the hotbed thermistor, and you've got a second nozzle if you've got one, so you can plug it in here. So uh, they're about the only ones that you might come unstuck with. Everything else is pretty straightforward. It's uh, pretty, pretty nicely labelled. Now, this is the uh, old CR-10, and that's the new CR-10S that I'm putting in and you'll notice that the layouts are quite different the pinouts uh, for the fan on the old board 
is no longer located on the new board you have to come around and put your positive and negative off the power supply here the hot uh, bed cable is also moved so you'll have a new location on the new board as well the controller fan is also shifted so there's a few little bits and pieces you've got to be a little bit wary of when you're putting it together everything's quite well labeled so you shouldn't have any problems the only one you might have a problem with if you don't label it will be the um, thermistors so your nozzle thermistor which will be fitting up on the end your next one will be your bed thermistor both of them have got black wires on them so uh, I've labelled mine with a silver uh, sort of bit of tape on it so I know which one is which but apart from that pretty straightforward and uh, we'll get stuck into it as you can see here I've wired the fan into the power supply on this side here so pretty simple I'll be now popping the board back in uh, placed down the bottom tightening it up because it's a bit easier to uh, well obviously fit everything at that point rather than try and do it on the board as it stands now I've now connected the heat bed as you can see here and we've got the nozzle or the hot end connected as well and uh, we'll get on to the next bit and here we go I've got everything uh, connected at the moment we've got the stepper motors down the back we've got the uh, X the Y the Z this is the uh, E motor along here this is the all-important filament sensor then we've got the um, little limit switches along here so you've got your X Y Z again we got all the power connected over the back here we've got the nozzle connected here this is your um, hot end and the other end here is your heated bed so we're all ready to go now I've only got to put these two little connectors in uh, the reason I didn't put them in before is because if I put them down there you wouldn't be able to see all the uh, limit switches so you've just got uh, one and two one is the closest one to you which drops straight down on top of that little one there number two fits on the other side so I'll put them in uh, situ right now and I'll pop the two cables in position we've got the thermistors here we've got that's the hot end thermistor and the other one here is the heated bed and I'll put a little bit of uh, silver tape on one of them so I knew which one it was rather than have to trace it back through the uh, wiring and uh, we're pretty well set to go and uh, we'll close it up fire it up see what happens and uh, nearly forgot that's the uh, the fan there so that's a control fan so uh, we've got two control fans in there I've got it connected in one of them we'll close it up now and hopefully everything will work and don't forget to use the zip ties and uh, tie them all back this is the last one I've got to put in on the side here I've now got the power supply screwed in position all I need now is to place the base on it which is just five screws to do that and uh, we're almost ready to fire it up now for the all-important does it work moment I've just turned it on and we're about to move the z-axis now the problem I had was the coupler was a little bit too tight on the stepper motor down the bottom so I've just lifted it up a fraction and it's working perfect now I'm printing out a calibration cube um, on the new setup and we'll see how it comes out and uh, we'll see what it looks like with the caliper 198 201 that 201 198 hmm. oh, there's 201 so that's pretty accurate um, I can't complain about the quality of the print it looks uh, very very clean nothing uh, out of the ordinary there if you like my videos please click the subscribe button and then go to the bell and select all and you will be notified in the future of any new uploads that I put onto YouTube thank you